Millions of Zambians in rural areas live without access to reliable electricity, hindering economic development and limiting opportunities. We'll be discussing a new initiative, Demand Stimulation Incentive, and the ambitious 1,000 Mini Grids Initiative. Now, can this program bring light and opportunity to remote communities? Time will tell. I'm joined by the CEO, Rural Electrification Authority in Zambia, Engineer Linus Chanda. Thank you, Engineer Linus, for joining me today. Pleasure. Well, the Zambian government has actually unveiled this new financial mechanism to support mini-grid developers in accelerating the deployment of mini-grids through the 1000 mini-grids initiative. Let's begin by trying to understand these concepts. What differentiates you know, mini-grids from the traditional or let's say the main grids and uh, why is the government paying attention to this? Okay, thank you for that question. Um, mini-grids essentially um, are electricity networks that are independent of the national grid. So they are not connected to the national grid. And what drives that um, initiative is the fact that in most places in Sub-Saharan Africa, extending the national grid can be very expensive, especially given the socioeconomic factors in the rural areas. Um, they may not, immediately you connect them to power, they may not be in a position to consume as much uh, um, electricity as would give a return back to the traditional um, utility owner. So the mini grids initiative really steps in to try and manage that potential uh, burden of denying people in the rural areas such uh, electricity provision. All right, let's talk about the demand stimulation incentive, which of course aims to incentivize connecting businesses and public institutions to these uh, mini grids. What more do we need to know about it and how is this expected to boost local economy? So, I mean, if you look at any rural setup, and I think this is common in sub saharan Africa, what would happen is uh, in the rural areas where they live, they would have very few equipment that uses electricity, essentially because they don't have electricity. Um, so what we are trying to do through this initiative is to generate consumption of electricity. In other words, look at productive uses of electricity, such as irrigation, such as uh, businesses like welding, like salons, and so on, to the extent that um, when these um, con consumers of electricity are established, they would result in the financial viability of the mini grids once they are established. So. What we have, uh, this launch that has been uh, unveiled, is essentially going to incentivize the rural communities to look at opportunities to consume as much energy as possible before the mini grids are, are established. Well, how are developers you know, reacting to this? Are they jumping right in to take the opportunity, knowing that there is support from whether it is the NGOs or even the government? Really, it's exciting. I think what we've seen in the last... Uh, uh, two days or so when we've been meeting and discussing these issues, we've seen quite a good number of potential investors, both local and international, who have come in to try and understand what's, uh, what this is uh, bound to do for them. We've seen different equipment manufacturers uh, who have come in to discuss the various options and what they expect to get out of uh, uh, this incentive. And indeed, a, a good number of people who make uh, different uh, different solutions that are suited for the rural areas. It is exciting and we sincerely do hope that um, the Zambian population will come on board in mass. You know, you know, just as you have said, DSI is expected to, you know, accelerate the closing of current energy access gaps in Zambia and all of that. And apart from that, I actually asked that question because I know businesses exist to make profit. And so how viable is Zambia's rural economy, you know, to the point where we are having uh, investors, you know, is it promising enough to attract investors? Uh, are there other things like other infrastructure that needs to be in place so that we can even have more investors? I know you've talked about how excited investors are about this, but then I I mean, I want us to just uh, close on this note. I think we start from uh, the understanding that electricity is a catalyst for development. So without electricity, there would be no development. Yes, we do have certain areas that really need certain infrastructure, such as roads and bridges, but these areas are inherently productive. They produce certain produces that could actually be pro processed to a, a, a certain resultant that would benefit the, the, the economy of the nation. 
So indeed, looking at um, uh, the profitability or indeed the the, uh, the the potential for development in uh, the different parts of Zambia, the, 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 um, the opportunity is huge. You may wish to know that uh, the Zambian government deliberately uh, in 2021 decided that they were going to decentralize uh, constituency development fund. This is a fund which was originally uh, managed centrally, and it would be directed to uh, the different parts of infrastructure development in the country. But what the government has done is to decentralize this fund so that each constituency can decide what infrastructure development they want to undertake, depending on the uh, prevailing conditions. And in terms of such infrastructure development to support the businesses that are going to come in, with this, this initiative, I actually foresee that it's going to accelerate the electrification and indeed the establishment of uh, mini grids. All right, thank you so much, Engineer Linus Chanda, the CEO, Rural Electrification Authority, Zambia. Thank you for your time. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you.